you over. Hey, Steve, Andy, happy Tuesday. All right, thanks, Scott. Hello, Andy. Hello, Steve and Scott and all my many friends out there. Yeah, the, the, the usuals are here. Uh, yep. New people are here. Tire kickers are here. Uh, welcome, everybody. I can't believe it's yet another week. It's just one of those weekly reminders of how fast time goes. Here we are again. Uh, so trade of the week. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Let's get started. Uh, trade of the week disclaimer, just a reminder we're we're uh, we're content publishers. I'm sorry, we're software as a service uh, subscrip subscribers. Uh, you're going to see some content in here today. The content should not be even remotely construed as uh, financial advice. If you need financial advice, you got to seek out the right people that are authorized and licensed to help you out with that stuff. So we're going to talk about some ideas, but uh, again, it's not really intended. It's not at all intended for financial advice. So uh, thanks for understanding that. All right. Um, the vibrant community of traders is important uh, because we have a very robust product. It's 14, almost 15 years old now with a lot of layers to it. It's not something you can learn overnight. And we recognize that. And so we have a few items to remind you guys of. The first and foremost, the trading room, the live trading room with Barry Anderson. He is there, and he is a saint all day long, um, opening up his desktop to help people uh, and manage and, and moderate a really good trading room. So he runs a pretty tight ship over there, and so do some of the lead traders that uh, participate. And the best part is it's free, so it's giving a lot of chat rooms out there a good run for the money. Uh, it's, anywhere from four to 500 people in there every day and they're chasing where the action is. But most importantly, Barry's there to help demonstrate. If you have any questions, you can always go in there and, and ask him and he's very generous with his time. And if he doesn't, some of the other members might as well. So that's available to you, the traders room, Monday through Friday, during the bell to the bell pretty much. Office hours are the afternoon webinars. Yesterday I helped Jamie, today is trade of the week. Tomorrow, Dan and Brad, I believe, return to talk about what's going on with the new releases. Thursday, Andy has some ideas, uh, depending upon what transpires on Thursdays. Always new and fresh, good content. These are all the 2 o'clock Pacific, 5 o'clock Eastern afternoon webinars after the market closes. But on Fridays, we don't have these. What we do have is a three-hour open forum where you guys can come in in the same fashion as the go-to webinar here and use the questions box to ask us any questions or seek help on um, technical support or scan settings or just general questions. We're making ourselves available for three hours a week, every Friday, um, 11 to 2 Eastern, while the market's on, so we can demonstrate things need be. And then lastly, uh, we have uh, the Trade Ideas University. It's a repeating four-day course. Starts on Monday and finishes on Thursday every week. We start over. I think Andy might even uh, get conditioned, if not, if he hasn't already, dropped in the playlist of uh, the recorded version. It was recorded about six months ago, but still very relevant. But if you want to come in live, you can come in live. Anybody can and uh, kind of take a four-part class every Monday through Thursday. It resets. And all those things combined, we really feel, is a great uh, onboarding and concierge tool uh, suite to kind of help you guys get up to speed as quickly as possible. You know, a lot of people come in and they use the product for just a few days and then they get frustrated and they say they want to cancel and they're done. And we, we all kind of shake our head and we try to remind them that it's not something that can be learned in a day or two or three days. It does take a few weeks. And so that's why we have promo codes and Scott will have a promo code for you guys when we finish here uh, to help people get into the first month and uh, kick the tires and get a feel for it because it, it takes a few weeks to really understand what's going on here. And so the next, next, the next slide here, of course, is the theme every week. You know, this is the world we're about ready to enter, guys, if not we're already there. Um, human and machine-assisted living. Um, it's going to be a lot of curated data that you know, humans still have to use their discretionary brains to work with. And I just want to remind everybody in the financial space, that's what we're doing here. Whether it's your own custom uh, scans that you're setting, you're using the... Uh, platform and the machine to show you what you want to see you've proven to yourself is what you want to see and what works in real time and then of course the AI uh, the uh, flagship tool and it's going to become more and more evolved as we go forward but just a quick reminder the world we're going to be moving into whether it's healthcare or sports or gambling or finance or accounting finance I mean there's a lot of people making 300k right now in uh, New York City that are financial analysts they might be a little scared if I were them because these are the kind of big data sets that they've been paid a lot of money to work with well 
AI is coming along and just making mincemeat out of those data sets and giving us real simple returns where the human being can curate those returns and make good decisions. So um, it's going to be a lot of shakeup in the next 15, 10, 15 years as AI moves into our, uh, our culture. All right, so we'll move forward now. Today's agenda, pretty much the same format as usual, market recap. I've got some things to talk about. Um, kind of a slow day in Holly, but Andy, I always find some good nuggets to discuss in Holly. Uh, today, the trade of the week, the, um, the, the uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The, <laughs> It's what this, what, what this webinar was, was designed to talk about. We've got a lot to talk about. It was not a good week for the trade of the week, but that's okay. We're going to make it a teachable moment and kind of uh, try and learn a few things from it. Uh, we'll have a lot more to talk about there. It'll be a good, good segment. Uh, sector glance, take a look at. Uh, take a look at some of the alerts we set last week and how they're doing, and I've got about six or seven more that might be interesting to look at today. So we will minimize that slideshow and bring up the S&P talk about what's going on out there after I sip some water grab my pen so uh, kind of a rehash of yesterday I know a lot of you attend both webinars but some of you don't you know the big picture here was the uh, 50 crossing below the 200 the death cross which by the way did signal some nastiness and then the story down here was the two-day bear market uh, it quickly reversed out of bear market territory and then uh, proceeded as we talked a lot about week after week. Each new level we threw at this market, they seemed to be able to get through. Um, but that being said, uh, we have the golden cross, the reverse of the uh, death cross back here. And this is significant because, you know, we're just pikers in the big scheme of things. There's multi-billion dollar funds out there and pension funds and mutual funds and 401ks and management funds and endowment funds and a lot of money being managed and for the most part it likes to be managed to the long side but when you have big uh, you know ocean liner type oil tanker events like the 50 crossing below the 200 giving it a name of the death cross and the 50 crossing back above the 200 giving it the golden cross you know the coast is clear these are big heavily weighted decision points that these fund and money managers take a look at. So we're back on the good side of things in terms of um, what the uh, the big funds think, uh, not not so much back here. So that's kind of the bigger picture I'm, I'm looking at at the moment. But in the more um, uh, zoomed in area here, we're definitely moving higher, um, creating higher highs, higher lows, you know, kind of defining what a trend should be. But what's been really frustrating is these last eight or nine trading days are these little damn dojis. You know, the market gaps and then closes where it opens. And a little bit of color there, a little bit of color there. But, you know, make no mistake, guys, these sideways ranges are not ideal. It's not what we want. We, we, we want days like this on the upside to go long and days like this on the downside to go, go short. But we don't get 20 of those days every month. We might get a handful of those days every month, and it reminds us we've got to make the best of them when they come. Because when they're not here, we get these little crap days where your your money is basically made by rolling the dice and holding stuff overnight because the next day the market opens up and just throws some elbows in a really tight range and doesn't really pick any direction. Uh, additionally, you know the volume has been pretty low definitely below the average volume here in the last few weeks, but that's okay. You know, like Brad Sand and Brian Shannon says, only the price pays, you know, volume secondary to price. Um, it's interesting to note though, on big down days, we have big volume, <laughs> um, but on the up days, we seem to have light volume. It just is what it is. But one thing I'm noticing is there's a real juicy gap here, and I know Andy sees that too. Even if we were to come back and fill that gap, we are still in the realm of higher highs and higher lows. I think that's a near-term target. Uh, market tried to sell off a little bit today. Didn't go anywhere as usual. We might gap down tomorrow and maybe even put in a little green doji if we gap down and trade higher. But you can kind of sense, not the frustration, but I'm, the reality of what it is out there, this is not a good backdrop for some real conducive directional movement, whether you're day trading or even swing trading for that matter. Um, so this gap, I think, is in play. Uh, it's one to watch. Additionally, you know, the lines are real simple now. My orange lines, I'm going to get rid of this one. It's not even in play anymore. Uh, this line, for the most part, you know, is a corresponding to these three sister peaks back here. It could act as a floor. If we do drop out a little bit, keep an eye on that level. But the line above is, you know, a foregone conclusion. We're so close to these uh, all-time highs in the SPY. I 
think we're going to make it. You know, the way price action works is if you're close enough in the neighborhood, you're going to stop by and knock on the door and say hi. In my world, though, it's just a matter of are we going to pull back first, fill that gap before we make an assault, or are we just going to grind higher into that level, which would not be ideal, really, because once you get there, you could run out of steam. Um, but there's really no bear case to be made. Uh, we're kind of in this uh, range here between um, S&P uh, pivot level and the all-time highs. Another quick look, you know, the uh, the NASDAQ was the one I was watching. <laughs> Perfect doji today. Look at that, Andy. Mm-hmm. Perfect stinking doji. Market opens and nobody wins. Just a bunch of noise in the algorithm. What's funny too is when you look at the close, you know, make no mistake about it. I've used that word phrase twice. Look at this. <laughs> this is high frequency algorithm making markets. These are not people pressing buttons making the markets. It's just what happens at the end of the last 15 minute candle each day. You get just a, a goofy uh, regurgitation of um, positions to not take home algorithms, these market making algorithms. <laughs> They're not going to take anything home for the most part. Um, so the, S, the, the NASDAQ has been leading us higher. Uh, its respective uh, all time high is also same same thing. It's going to be challenged. I just don't know if it's going to be challenged first before we maybe come back and fill the NASDAQ gap. I mean, nothing wrong with that. Higher highs, higher lows. So that would be a nice, easy, simple case uh, for the bulls to, to make. Um, like I said before, just a couple of low volume drifts back up to this level. You know, could set up for something uh, reversal. Who knows? One other little item of interest. You'll get a kick out of this one, Andy. Uh, yesterday, I kind of mentioned the IWM just has not been able to get past the 200 day. Look at that. Numerous attempts, mm -hmm. you know. It's almost like, you know how I love my my um, my visuals. And it's almost like uh, the herd, you know, the uh, the spies and then Dow and the NASDAQ. And they're crossing this river in the Serengeti, but they look over and this is the weakest animal of the herd. <laughs> and it just can't make it through the god dang river. <laughs> so is the herd going to have to return and help this thing out? Or is this thing going to work itself out and, and make it through the river? But right now, the IWM is is the weakest child it can't bust through this 200 day moving average the crocodile crocodile got it yeah, today. snap it come up and just uh, snap it yeah that's a shark <laughs> oh, pretty good in Africa. <laughs> but boy you know in the bigger picture andy look at this i mean that's like textbook inverted head and shoulders if i've ever seen one mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, you know, this is the third one, the only one out of the three ETFs that just can't find its way back up here to all time highs. That's notable. I'll just keep it at that. It's notable. Other than that, um, you know, it's it, it can't fight its way through this 200. So unless the IWM can make it past the uh, the animals and the uh, predators in the uh, muddy river and transgress through and catch up to the other guys, you know, that could be. Uh, could be something to watch tomorrow. If, 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 matter of fact, if we look at it right here, IWM did have a rough day. It did not put a doji in. So no. a little bit more further downside in the IWM could give us the drag lower that we might need to come back and fill this gap in the spiders and the NASDAQ. So, Well, uh, uh, I mentioned in my last uh, Thursday uh, webinar when I was doing this that remember last time, Steve, the IWM finally ended up dragging the other ones down pretty hard. Uh, it was right yep. here. Yeah. Uh, it was right. Oops, we got to go to the IWM before I change my marker. So there's the spy. The IWM was it was it was back yeah. here. That's what it was, right? Yeah, it was back. Yep, it's back there. Uh, so if we way. transpose, you know, oops, let's go back and try that again. Transpose the spies back in there. We'll see some relative strength. Spies were holding up okay, you know, but when we come back and what Andy's saying is the IWM, that whole time was creeping lower, right there. So what he's saying is that it did it before. It dragged the market lower before it could drag it again. Mm -hmm. Unless I'm putting words in your mouth. <laughs> no, that's that's true. That's exactly what I said. Yeah. Um, you know, one last thought, and Andy and I uh, kind of discussed this a little bit this morning. This is a fang-driven market <laughs> again, guys. The only thing I really see that's got a lot of interest in continuing to go higher is the Facebooks and the Amazon, and definitely Apple. We talked about Apple being a proxy for dragging this market around. Rather an interesting close, actually, in Apple. Mm -hmm. Apple's kind of a big proxy. That's a bit of a... Uh, uh, exhaustion candle, possible reversal, maybe come back down to these levels again. So I feel like there could be some undercurrents in the market to bring us back a little bit, especially that gap is just, it's so juicy. It's just, you know, when you have all these little moves higher on low volume, a gap like this can be filled in 45 minutes. 
of an opening session. I don't know when, but it could easily happen. So that's all I'm looking at, Andy. Unless uh, you got anything else you want to add on that? No, respect. no. And and to Waleed's comment, he he said he's saying Andy's hot air balloon analogy, and and I talked about this on Thursday. Uh, it's like if you look there in the spiders in the middle of last month for like two weeks, we could not go anywhere. We tried one day. We had a green bar where we traded higher. Uh, there you go. And what did we do? The following next day, we came right back, and we just could not get any lift during the day. So what happens is. We ended up pretty much making this whole move from 280 to where we are now. What's that, 287, 288 uh, on gap ups? We had one day there where we gapped up and traded okay, but other than that, it's just been a series of little gap ups, and it's like it's like taking a hot air balloon that you can't lift off the ground. You know, you can't get uh, can't get any enough air in it to lift, so you you take it and you up to the top of a tall building and try to get it to go from up there where there's less. Uh, atmosphere or whatever you know those uh, less in this case resistance air is and uh, yes, yeah the air, the air is thinner. thinner there you go yeah where the air is thinner and uh, but it well so we'll see i would rather trade up to all time highs and gap up so it'd be interesting if we do um, do what steve says which i think is a very good chance i am going to want to know if it's going to gap up to there or is it going to trade up to there mm. we just don't know unless you got a we crystal don't. ball that works mm -hmm. All but, right, so that's all I've got to for this segment. Um, again, like Andy and I said, if you if you just sit in long Facebook and sit in long Amazon and, and sit in long Apple, each gap is a, a a new little blessing for you each morning as you come in and and see all the stuff. God dang, Steve, I can't type today. What a mess. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, but not everybody's doing that, <laughs> so we're looking for opportunity, and opportunity's been been kind of scarce. But uh, yeah, I'll leave it at that. <clears throat> all right. You want me to take it now for the um, whatever you want. Sure, if you want to take it, right. whatever you want to do. Let me grab it. All right. Well, guys, I'm not uh, going to talk a little bit too much today. I think there is a, a point, a little a important little nugget to pass uh, passed around. Uh, if you look at today, once again, guys, I always kind of like to look to see what we are, are working with today. All right. Remember, Holly exits, she enters and exits uh, right for now, all trades in the same day. So we had a market, basically, we're, in the, uh, we're focused on the spies now, not the queues. Um, we, uh, we gapped down, and we tried to fight back, and we did go to highs, uh, but nowhere near, you know, uh, going positive. And for about, uh, what, well, 50, 30, 45 minutes, then we just rolled back over and actually went to lows before putting in this ridiculous uh, wick at the close here. But so just not a lot to work uh, with, you know, today on the long side. And, and, and actually, I think it could have been a lot worse had stocks like, uh, uh, you know, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, some of the big ones holding up the, the major averages. Uh, I saw a lot of stuff, you know, getting hit today. And it can be seen in Holly. And the, what I wanted to show you now, if I go to Holly Grail, you're going to see uh, it was all longs today, but they, I think she only had like a one short strategy in there. And Holly Neo was a series of longs today. So I cannot compare the shorts, but I want to compare today in Holly uh, 2.0. This is sorted by risk on profit. And you can see here the top six strategies are all short. That's the kind of stuff you can pay attention to. I mean, uh, you know, I'm not. I'm not pleased with uh, Holly's production today. I know it was a tough day, but uh, you know uh, she should do better at that in, a, in at least one of the uh, uh, strategies. But what I wanted to show you guys is what you can garner uh, from this if you're if you're watching it, okay? And if you see the longs having a hard time in the early going, uh, and there were uh, the majority, you know, I say majority, there was a couple of shorts that fired off. But you could get a good look at what was working this morning as the shorts were actually making money. These came out at 9.02 central time, 32 minutes after the market opened. And you had a couple of longs. No, that's another short that came out there. But here's one at 8.55. Mighty Mouse didn't really, couldn't get anything going. Uh, another long here at 9.37, couldn't get anything going. So maybe on a day like today, uh, and I'm not saying... I'm not one to look at this stuff and say, you should have done this or you should have done that. I'm just saying at the end of the day, when you look back at Holly and you can get an idea of what worked and what didn't, you can see, you can see here that the shorts worked and the longs didn't. 
in a market that gapped down and really could not get anything. You had one green bar here that that's not uh, that was just an anomaly, and you can see it rolled back over. Uh, so this is the kind of stuff maybe that you can that will help you in the future if you do like to trade Holly, and a lot of people do. Uh, maybe if you get another scenario case like this where we gap down and we cannot even go back to flat uh, after a certain amount of time, maybe you want to focus on the shorts. Um, I was disappointed there wasn't more short strategies in a day. That's just the way the numbers work out. But um, there was a couple of good ones and, and some really some really easy ones. I mean. This is a beautiful one right here. A lot of no pain ones are down the short side. I mean, this one right here, you can see there's the trigger, risk off, got out uh, in this area, but risk on kept going. Uh, Cameron, you can see that one, another decent one, although you had to sit through a little wick right there. Not too bad. You probably have seven or eight cents against you. So there was some opportunity. Uh, there's a nice one, even though the, the share count, well, it's 251,000, it's tradable. But uh, once again, uh, it worked. So there was some opportunity to the short side. Uh, honestly, yeah, but not not a good day. I'm not going to tell you it's a good day for Holly because it wasn't. I mean, a couple of strategies uh, were just flat, Mr. Flat basically. Uh, Grell and Neo, just not a whole lot happening there. Couldn't get anything going, and this one was down due to the uh, due to the longs. Uh, there was just a. Uh, uh, Number of longs, especially these these couple right here, just did not work out very well at all. But this is guys, this is where I say you have the advantage. I, I, I you know, if it's me and I'm playing longs today, and I get an entry like this, and I get a nice little what is that, 45, 50 cents, in a market that I just showed you that can't is down on the day and rolling back over. Hey. This is where you have the advantage. You can cut some of these. You don't have to sit here and ride these things all the way back down to a flat or all the way back down to a loser in this case. Uh, you know, well, actually, Wally, actually, that one wasn't that bad. Yeah, Wally does a good job of reminding us. Not only does it make it difficult for traders to play these light volume gap up spinning top dojis, it makes it mm -hmm. difficult for Holly as well. It's just, mm -hmm. it's just the way it is. It's exactly. Really we need another – well, we never really got one. We got a monkey bath last time. We need a big washout what we need, big gully washer we called – Sure. to say. <laughs> gully washer. In the south. Yeah. <laughs> where it's raining cats and dogs. That's right. <laughs> where the, uh, that's an old saying, where it's raining so hard, the cats and dogs that went off into the bushes to die are coming yeah. back out. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <sighs> All right, Steve, I think that's sure. about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's get to this next seven because I'm kind of excited about it. You know, even though it wasn't a winning trade and it happened quick, there's a lot to – a lot to discuss here. So how okay. can I I'll change? I'll right, there we go. I got it. Okay. So while Andy was talking, I was kind of setting it up here for a little, uh, little adventure we're going to go on. Um, you know, the trade of the week was selected. Um, uh, DK, uh, Andy and I both looked at it. Um, coming from the heels of the last few weeks, some of the breakouts were not working. So we felt it was time for a pullback strategy. So I'll just discuss the genesis of the trade. And then we're going to go through the trade here in real time. I'm going to give you some, I'm going to go through like that. Talk about what I was thinking, what we were thinking, what you should be thinking or should be looking at in the moment. Because it's really easy to sit back and, hey, this did this and this did that, but should have did this, should have did that. But it's sometimes more educational and in interesting to go through timeline and see the decisions we had to make based on the information that we only had at that time. And we'll talk about that. But primarily, uh, back to the genesis of the trade, it was an idea to not chase a breakout. You've heard me say many times we don't want to be the person in buying that third green candle. But this was a really nice breakout. I mean, in the bigger scheme of things, um, there's something going on here. It, it's breaking its major downtrend, and, and it came from the let's go fishing alert that Andy created, which means they're very solid companies on the balance sheet and the fundamental side. They've just taken a technical hit, and these companies show up on the scan when they start to break their downtrend, and, and here we were. But we were not going to say, hey, buy that Monday open, buy the new tick on the high. I mean, that, that would be just, that wouldn't be responsible. <laughs> Wouldn't be prudent, wouldn't be responsible, mm -hmm. would go against a lot of the things we say. However, there's that tight dance you want to make to, to participate on a secondary opportunity um, without not chasing. But so there's that there's that, that, that balance between not chasing too much and not um, um, being too uh, uh, 
conservative and waiting for a big pullback. So that's kind of what we were playing with. And honestly, I was, we were looking at two levels, um, either the uh, the first le the level of 38.50, which is where we ultimately went with. And you can see that was based on these wicks and even going back here. There were some good reasons for that level. Um, if that level had not held, uh, we were going to call, you know, 38, 50 cents lower. But we decided to, to as I deal with the balance of trying to find that right balance, not get left out of a trade. Uh, the volumes were great. Look at these two. Again, we're working backwards here. I haven't shown you the next two days. We'll get there. Um, trust me, we'll get there. So level one uh, was the 38.50. That was the area that we thought, you know, we could withstand um, some of the uh, uh, movement up and take off a little bit of a pullback and, and, and do that. But these these entries are a little different than the, the breakout entries, of course. And so I want to remind everybody, and I probably should have done it in hindsight. I could have mentioned at least a, pair, a sentence or two in the email. But these are the kinds of trades where you might want to consider scaling in. We've always talked about scaling in. It's not averaging in. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna risk five thousand dollars on a trade and you jump in and you and you buy five thousand dollars on this pullback, and then you use it pulls back and you buy another five thousand, well, you just averaged into a loser. All right. But if you buy twenty five hundred here on the first level and watch it knowing that you've got some choices to make and you can always get in on the second half to see how it goes. That is what we call scaling in. And some of these pullback type of alerts where you're trying to absorb the pullback and the sell pressure, it's not an exact science. You're never going to hit it perfectly. And so let's kind of go through um, the trade as it developed. Right now we're here, we're here at the weekend. This is what it looked like on the weekend. And these were our two points of interest. Uh, the first point was the actual buy point for the trade of the week. All right, we'll move your attention over here to the 15-minute chart, and let's tick into the open. First thing we notice is the stock right off the bat would have stopped, everybody, would have uh, faked everybody out by going a few ticks higher, and we we know that we don't want to do that on the daily chart, so we avoided that. But uh, let's uh, we're 30 minutes into the open here. There's our orange line. Let's kind of see how the price action ha uh, reacts, behaves at these lines. Okay, so I'm going to go forward a little bit. Ah, oh, look at that bounce right off that first line and there's our fill so there's our trade of the week fill um again um you could buy the whole lot but uh andy and i both prefer to kind of do some scaling in so um that is the level at which the first lot could be bought now let's go back a minute now let's say it bounced off that line <laughs> bounced off that level and shot back close to highs and went through highs that might be the point at which you can grab your second lot but um, that didn't happen. And a lot of times very strong stocks will do that. After a couple of days, you'll get an hour and a half of the open, a little pullback, and then blam, if it goes back through highs again, that's a ton of momentum there. So let's move forward a little bit here. Okay, so now we're underwater a little bit. Here's that moving average starting to curl over. Okay, we didn't get through that. We might be in for some pressure here. Um, for those that scaled in, maybe get ready to start looking to bidding in your second half down here at that other line. As we move forward, First candle didn't touch it, but the second candle did, and the second candle behind that actually held that line. So there was a little bit of buying interest at that secondary line as well. But then this is where the trade started to get lost, okay? Um, move forward a few more candles, and let's look forward. Uh, now we're into, uh, I'm going to bring this daily candle in here. And what we mentioned was we need to see, just like the price action is done for two weeks, bouncing off the 10-day. So you start to take your focus off the intraday here. Yeah, we're underwater on the second lot, but we know that we really need to focus on this 10-period moving average. And if we look at the, the stock, often the price action will overshoot on the daily chart and bounce back up. And there's nothing wrong with a wick that busts through, as, as an example here, here, here. You know, three days in a row. So looking at this wick, if that's the way it was at the moment, we're thinking, okay, this could get interesting. Um, it's funny, I just had a bad tick. <laughs> bad tick just <laughs> threw everything off after hours. Um, so we're watching, okay, now, all right, okay, we're bouncing here as we're getting into the close. Let's see what happens here. Oh, back to the 15 minute. Look at what's happening again. Oh shit, we might be testing lows. Here comes that moving average that Steve talks a lot about and it grabbed the price and it's throwing it back down. Yep, we're going back to low. So now we're more in line of where we are here on the daily chart. And now I think that's our low for the day. That's the low of that wick. And so as the as, as the stock closed yesterday right here, this is what it looked like. This is what I was thinking. Okay, 
one, that was not fun, and two, a side junk. Andy and I have been through this a lot. We used to have a managed account where people opened up, you know, dozens of people opened up an account, and they participated on all of our trades, and we had to face the music every week, and that's what I'm doing right now is trying to face the music and, and make the best of a, a trade that didn't work out, but let's learn the most that we can from it. Um, so uh, what we were thinking uh, at the close of yesterday was, all right, a successful test of that, uh, you know, that candle, that, that moving average, excuse me, and Andy can attest I was really cheering for a close, maybe back up around these levels at that first level right there. That would have given us a really nice wick on the daily chart, but we didn't get that. So we have to deal with what we got. So therefore, the plan becomes how to deal with this trade tomorrow. It seems as though our dead stop is right there. The low of the day, I'll even give it a five cent wiggle and I'll draw a new line. So coming into today, this stock had has one chance, it had, because we know what happened, but it had one chance to bounce today and it didn't. It didn't hold yesterday's low and yesterday's low was the key. So as we enter into today's trade, pretty much right on the open, um, this stock told us it wasn't done. It wasn't going to bounce. It wasn't interested in bouncing off that that moving average, and you know the trade was 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 uh, ditched for a loser. And then as you start to see, as this moving average comes down, we're in for more. And if you're not out by this time, you got to start putting everything together. The 15 minute and and the oops, I need to move forward here on the daily. There we go. So this starts to bleed down and look really ugly. You know, honestly, you're out. Should have been you know right around here. Um, even though we hate to get out on that first candle because so often mm -hmm. that first candle, which is, which just throws a whole other wrinkle of decision process and decision trees in here. I know it's hard, but, um, in this particular case, that was the right, um, measure because it just couldn't get going. Look how it came back up to yesterday's low and then rolled back over to new fresh lows. So not a good trade. Um, you know, it's the market, it's what happens, but I'm hoping that we can at least learn a little bit of what the thought process was as we were going through. Again, I think some of the big takeaways were at yesterday's close, that was our drop dead point. You know, that's it. We can't go much lower than that. And it was very unfortunate that it reversed two days of nice upward volume with one big down whoosh and no news really to speak of. So coming into today, we have to adhere to that line. Unfortunately, it you know, shook most people out uh, on the open, but that was the correct move as it turned out. So I see a couple questions popping here. I didn't want to get thrown off track. Let me just see if anything needs to be addressed. Oh yes, thank you, Waleed. Uh, a lot of trade of the week, some work out, some don't, some trigger, some don't. But uh, I wanted to make this a teachable moment to try and get the most out of what we can. A uh, friend was scaling in and out. Fundamentals looked good to him. Um, yeah. Well, thanks for some of the uh, some of the uh, comments there. Um, it's no longer of interest to me, especially the way it closed today. And uh, it was it was kicked out early this morning. But um, any questions on that or how we could have done it differently or how you could have done it differently? I, th I think scaling is a real important concept that we probably should have touched on a bit more in the email, but I knew that we could really touch on it on the uh, webinar here. Again, it's not averaging a loser. You're, you're setting an amount of what your position size to be, whether it's 5%, of your total account or a certain amount of dollars, you can leg into stocks. Now that's not always going to be the case on breakouts because in breakouts everybody's reaching up trying to get in. But on these pullbacks, you're trying to gauge the level at where you think there's going to be interest. And we kind of pegged it a little bit. You know, there was that first level and that first attempt right there. And then the second attempt right there, pretty much right on cue. But then once that broke, it was like, okay, we're going into defensive mode here. And then another defensive mode observation was that the momentum line was not going to allow it to trade back up. Here's your end of day market making um, squaring up right there and set the tone for this morning. If it broke that line, we had to get out. Um, uh, Margaret, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Answer, Margaret. Uh, oh, Margaret says scaling in. Uh, reference to price. Yes, Marguerite, on stocks that are pulling back and we're trying to bid in and, and buy stocks as people are panicking and selling out, you can overshoot those levels a lot and it's not an exact science. So entering in, in thirds, as, as friend said, he did his in, in thirds. Um, some people might scale in in halves. What you don't want to do is scale in at the first level and go your full boat and then realize it's going against you and just say, well, if I can just double up here, I don't need much of a move to get. That's the mentality that starts to kill traders. So that's what scaling in a losing position is. I'm sorry, that's what that's what averaging down a, a losing position is. We're not averaging down, we're scaling in to create an initial 
position of our size. So um, doubling down, not so much averaging out. You're doubling down. Doubling down. down. Yeah. yeah, doubling mm -hmm. down. I like the Vegas. It makes it more of a casino sound. Exactly. But in these types of entries, this is typically kind of the way to go is to kind of get an average going and then hope for the best. But we didn't get it. Mm -hmm. So I'll put up the spiders real quick, Steve. I'm going to uh, give them kind of a, a backdrop to when you and I used to run our little mini hedge fund. And uh, yeah, that's a great, great view right there on the daily. And, and guys, we, we do. Uh, you know, put out a trade of the week pretty much every week. I think there's been four or five times over the last three years where Steve has called cash, but uh, for the most part, we put out a trade of the week and it's going to be long uh, and uh, occasionally we, we put use SDSs. So if you look at what this market has done and we're talking about scaling in and when you have a market and I, I don't care what people tell you, it's overbought. It's overbought to me. Anytime you get a move like that to start the year uh, that we've had, up until this point, I think it's maybe one of the uh, best starts ever. Uh, when, when Steve and I were running our little mini hedge fund, we would, we would, there's many times where we would just sit back and wait. We would sit back and wait for that pullback or maybe even be looking at shorts right now. We didn't really didn't do any shorts, I don't think, but uh, mm -hmm. don't feel like you have to take a I mean, if you do like trading the trade of the week, don't feel like you have to take it. Maybe wait for one that's right for you. Wait for the market conditions that are right for you. And really, if I'm doing scaling in up at these levels, I'm usually doing it, uh, you know, half my normal size uh, and then taking that and scaling in a third at a time. So um, just uh, we always talk about it in, in the uh, trade of the week. I know because I've written some of them. We always talk about use, look at the backdrop of the market. OK, and when you get these these overbought conditions, you know, just use your own judgment and don't feel like you have to take a trade. But anyway, it's a lot of people that are afraid to jump in, but they're waiting for a pullback and a lot of people are afraid to wait for a mm -hmm. pullback. And so it's just kind of a stalemate up here. Mm -hmm. All right. So where to from here? I think we got a little. Uh, OK, we finished up that. So sector glance. Let's just take a quick look at sectors and we'll look at some uh, alerts that were set last week as well as some new ones I've got. Uh, let's bring this back to parity. And in real time here, let's just see if any sectors kind of jump out. There's usually two or three that you might want to keep an eye on the following day. Well, let's just see what we got. All right. So defensive day, gold miners popping up, but nowhere really interested in breaking out of that range. Same with the juniors, range bound. Gold, the uh, commodity, also range bound. This I did find interesting. Uh, the TLT is going to be a defensive play. If the market starts to sell off again tomorrow or the next day, we might see some more upticks in the treasuries. But notice where it had that really nice move as the stocks and, 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 and bonds were moving together. And then the bonds decoupled, pulled back. But look at where they found technical support, pretty much right where we always let's say look left. Mm -hmm. So bonds could be in for a little push tomorrow, especially if there's some weakness and you've got fund managers rotating um, into something different. Keep an eye on that, I think. Um, shit, we've been talking about this for a couple weeks now. The, uh, the IYR, the REITs, they've just been slogging higher slowly. Um, but at the moment, nothing really setting up. I'm looking for something that's setting up interesting, by the way, not just not just to commentate on all this. Uh, that's software. Stay away from new NG. I, I think we even said it last week, but I'll say it again. I might even have to draw it here. Yeah, wedge. Yeah, this, uh, this, this healthcare stuff, this healthcare sector is really creating an interesting wedge that's going to need some sort of a resolve. Um, I don't need to draw the downside. You can just kind of see, oh, I don't even know why I use those. I've got my new drawing tool. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There's your wedge. Um, we'll see what comes of that. Something to keep on your radar. Matter of fact, you could even, you know, you could even come in here and just say right there, a little high right there and come in here and set a price alert. Because if it breaks that little high right there, that's breaking out of the downside of the wedge. Keep an eye on healthcare. So, so far we're, we're watching treasuries. Healthcare is coiling. You know, it's, it's not like it's bouncing back and forth in a wide range. It's it's painting itself into a corner, and that's when things start to get interesting. A lot of a lot of pent up pressure here that could uh, could could come out. Kinetic energy, potential energy. Uh, that's basically the Nasdaq uh, technology spiders moving sideways, not even pulling back. Silver in a mess. We talked about oil being a strong commodity the last couple of weeks, and it's continuing to move higher. China, Nasdaq. Spiders, Dow, the brokers, eh, not doing much there either. Financials, getting caught up in the 200-day. Airlines, semis. 
oil service energy. Is our IWM? We can't get back through that 200 day. Home builders. Oh, interesting. Home builders have had a quiet little move, haven't they? Mm hmm. They sure have. But now they're giving some back. So there's really no setup there. Again, I'm just looking for possible setups. Everything looks like it kind of wants to roll over and give, give back a few days. So TLT makes sense why tomorrow could have a little pop in TLT. Treasury is a defensive move, but you know, XLV healthcare is not doing anything. But of all the sectors I just looked at, this one seems to be the most poised in terms of painting itself into a spring coil, which has a lot of uh, potential energy, perhaps. We will see. All right, so let's move on. I set a few alerts last week. We'll clear those out in a moment, but let's just revisit them real quickly here. Um, Wang was the uh, bottom reversal. I love mm -hmm. those. I got I, I got one of those for you today as well, guys. So those I really like those when they come through. That one worked worked okay. Macy's I said had a nice day, but it's given most of that day back. But uh, maybe somebody anticipated that. <coughs> Excuse me, NTLA. Not much going on there. Broke out and went sideways. Not a lot of alpha. Looks like it gave back profits today. RPD also triggered and then reversed. Typical in this market. And then AYX, just a horrible two-week stock in a row. So let's clear these out and look at some new fresh ideas. And I will share these ideas when we're done. Let's talk about the wisdom of some of them. I've already gone through. I won't go ahead and click the, uh, the scans, but I'll let you know where they came from. Um, the first two came from the uh, trend change lubricant, looking for stocks, breaking a downtrend and a possible good short float. Uh, pets. Now, not, a, not, a, not an amazingly great chart. And the only reason I don't like it, I call it a porcupine chart. You know, it never really seems to close on highs or lows. It's always putting spikes out to the it's like a big spike strip, right? Mm -hmm. um, nonetheless, it's got a lot of shorts in there, 53% uh, short the float, going sideways, maybe even creeping up. But this thing I'm going to mark up here at uh, current highs right there, 54, so we'll go 55. And I will remind people in the notes, big short float. Squeeze potential, 53% short the float, and there's our first one. Uh, second one from the same scan, looking for trend reversals is Sono, I believe. Yeah, same thing. Um, looking really nice there. I call that the bird in the hand. It's just kind of waiting for a reason to, to take off, moving sideways and if anything, anything even creeping a little higher as it does it. So I'm gonna do today's highs, 1140, we'll go 1141. And we'll just, uh, a short float on this one's not that significant, so I'm not gonna make mention of it. We'll just call it trend reversal, question mark. All right, the next one is from the bouncer. Uh, there he is right there, AJRD. Um, let's see what happened today. Was it earnings today? No, it wasn't earnings. Uh, I don't know what the news is. Somebody can go take a look at it. I don't really care what the news is because whatever the news was, it was absorbed on the open and bought back. These are the strongest ones that uh, really it's like shot wing, that. wing the other day. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to go ahead and mark this one up and look for some follow through as well. Uh, 3355. Looking for follow through. All right. There's a oh shit. One of them already. Oh, this, this one already trigger. Okay. So we're going to adjust that. Let's edit the price alert for that. We'll go 50, 56. That probably shouldn't trigger it. No, it did again, huh? What am I doing wrong here? And I go 60. Let's delete it. Let's delete it. After hours. That's really odd. All right, well. Shoehorn this one in. Now let's try it again. There's a little bit of daylight there. Uh, the next one was from Let's Go Fishing. Andy's, uh, and this is Eli Callaway for you golfers. Hmm. Uh, good looking stock. I mean, I mean, it's a, a, a giant base down here. Um, lower, higher, low, higher, low, higher, low. 
little bit of consolidation. Maybe it takes a day or two, but I think it can break out of this consolidation. It's just kind of hopped off the, uh, the page at me. 16.58. And going into the Masters, too. Yeah. Oh, good point. Yes. It's gonna, probably going to see a lot of commercials. Golf, exclamation point. <laughs> All right. A couple more here uh, from the comp OLED. And the comp meaning the composite rating. Uh, this one has a great balance sheet. It's got great technicals, good score. It's been higher, but it's creeping its way back up. So I like the sideways action, broke out of the sideways action, into some more sideways action. Maybe this moving average takes a day or two to force the issue, but that's a nice five-day tight range. Mm -hmm. Look at that. The high is expensive stock, 167.82. we got to go. So you only buy 20 shares, 167.82 instead of 1,000. <laughs> Hmm. And okay, the comp rating on that one, by the way, do I have that? What is that? It's going to be in the 90s, regardless. It doesn't matter. All right, uh, and then two more. I actually have a short. We usually don't have shorts in here, but I went through Holly's trades today, and there was one of them that was kind of interesting. I typically don't. What the hell did I just do? Oh, I clicked on my. Uh, Custom channel, darn it. Well, it doesn't matter. We can still use this. Let's go back to the one that I want to look at, GES. So, don't typically call shorts, but boy, when I saw this, you know, I refer to this as the, uh, I guess let me backtrack. I don't like to call shorting a breakdown or shorting in the hole typically, unless it kind of looks like this. What do I mean by that? I mean, this has got the bouncing ball look. Bounce, bounce, bounce. Eventually, it's going to run out of floor to bounce. I think it could break. So, um, I like the, the fact that it's tested it a few times. I think it's just knocking on the door looking for the right crack in the floor. So let's uh, take the low of today right there, and we'll go 1801. And notice this one from above automatically goes to a short because we're above. Just remind people, short. All right, that is in locked and loaded. And the very last one before we share is FTNT also from Holly, um, not a tight range, but boy, a big, long, lumbering range that looks like Holly saw something today, became a buy stock, it closed at near highs. I think there could be something to say here, and this is an anticipation trade. I don't want to wait until these highs back here. I would say if it takes out these highs, chances are it's going to assault these and these on the same day. So we'll just use that as our guide, 87.95, and then that's it. 87, oops, 95. We'll call this one range break head start. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is it. So what I'll do before uh, we bring Scott back in is I will share these price alerts with you guys using the cloud feature. And call it a day. Share. Seven select. Remember when that one time when I deleted them? Oh, I do. <laughs> That sucked. <laughs> Copy all. All right, I'm going to the chat window, and I'm going to type in the chat window um, price alerts. And I'll drop them. And paste. So, again, for those that don't know, you can use that code and copy it and drop those scans into your own price alert, which means when they trigger, if they trigger, we will all see them at the exact same moment in time. All right, uh, you're welcome, Waleed. Thanks for tuning in again. Um, anything else you want to add, Andy, before we bring Mr. Scott in? No, thanks, everybody, uh, for your kind words. No, all done. Yeah, David remembers that time, and I recovered them all in only a minute. Yep. <laughs> Heavy focus. I think I had Andy sing a song or whistle while I did that. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, uh, thanks for the comments. Thanks for the questions. We'll bring Scott back in here, and I'll put my slideshow back up, and he's got a code for somebody who maybe want want to use it. Yeah, thanks, y'all. Um, on the way out, there's a couple items. Uh, we do have a podcast. We should have a new episode up on Friday, so you can prepare for that by subscribing. Search for Trade Ideas Podcast wherever you listen to podcasts, and click the subscribe button. Check out some of the past episodes with guests. There's some good stuff in there. Uh, we also have an ebook. Both Andy and Steve contributed chapters. It has five strategies on how to win in a post-BTFD market. Just put your email address into the page at trade-ideas.com slash ebook. Click submit and get the download link to your email. 
and hold on to that PDF. It's valuable, and you can use those strategies moving forward. Uh, we have a code, April Holly, all caps. It's case sensitive. Saves you 15% off the first month or year of any subscription. And uh, standard subscribers can also use this to do an upgrade from standard to premium and save the same amount off your first installment. Any questions, email our support desk at info at trade-ideas.com. That goes into our help desk software, and we route it to the appropriate team member. You get a fast reply. You can also follow Steve on Twitter at TodayTrader. We also have at Trade Ideas. Facebook.com slash Trade Ideas Pro is the Facebook page to like and share stuff with your friends. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Andy. Thanks, all. We're going to have a recording up later on tonight or tomorrow morning, so stay tuned for an email. And uh, thanks, everyone. Bye. All right. Cool. See you next time. Yep. See you Thursday, guys. Bye-bye.